Hello dear viewers, I'm George from Ireland and here I am at Sissinghurst Castle in Kent, the United Kingdom. Um, so this, uh, this, this castle goes back uh, in its earliest foundations to the, to the 14th century, but nothing is left from that early. Um, the earliest you can see are, are parts of the building which date from the 1560s. It was built by the, by the Baker family. So here in the southeast corner of, of England, so I propose not to speak principally about, um, about the castle itself and its magnificent gardens, but I shall chiefly be addressing Peter Sackville West and our husband um, Harold Nicholson, who are the most famous inhabitants of the castle. But um, there are so many fascinating features. Even look at this, what would you call it, flower bowl? Um, these, these metal flower bowls with these lion's heads at the, at the edges and the lion holding some sort of handle in its mouth. So there's just such great attention to detail. Um, anyway, so we're, we're near the Weald of Kent, Weald being uh, this anachronistic word for forest. And these oasts, you call those houses there, the conical roofs, little white bits at the top which can be turned, depending where the wind and the sun is, use that for drying out hops. And um, hops were then, were then um, fermented into beer. So that's some um, uh, traditional English beer. I don't, I don't know which beers it makes. Hardly ever drunk anymore. But uh, Cockneys used to go hop picking in Kent and so on in the summer um, just to get out of London some, some work, which was paid a little bit. It was uh, more agreeable to be in the countryside than to be in the metropolis when uh, it was sweltering. These are proper seasons in ye old days. So in through the main um, uh, castle gate and look at the wooden ceiling or floor, whichever you wish, above us passing on and there is just um, enough of uh, zephyr to be agreeable on this very warm day, about 20 degrees, very unusual for me not to be wearing um, long johns or whatever. So um, this is the oldest part of the castle, that's in the 1560s, everything else is slightly later, uh, this is a bit rebuilt. Um, and uh, so each, uh, the, the, the concept is that the, the, all these walled gardens is a different room within each one with different plants and different scents and so forth. So it's, it's very well put together, but somehow a faintly casual garden. And are, are these magnolias up here? I know very little about plants, forgive me. Um, but uh, so on to the most famous inhabitants. Well, Vita Sackville West, or the name is actually Victoria Mary Sackville West. So she's born in 1892, and I, I think it was here she was born into uh, an aristocratic British family. And <coughs> so the Sackvilles, they've been um, <coughs> ennobled some generations earlier. Um, her distant cousin, they became the fourth Lord Sackville. And they're related to the Sackvilles, who were the Earls of Devon, as in it was Sackville Street in Dublin when, when Lord Devon, because Lord Devon was Viceroy of Ireland. Sackville Street in Dublin has, of course, been um, O'Connell Street officially since, since for, for a century now. Um, but uh, what else about the Sackville West? So Rita Sackville West grew up um, in considerable comfort here, a wealthy, well-connected family. Um, but her mother had been born outside of wedlock. A bit surprising that her father married her, uh, her um, Vita's mother, bearing in mind that um, you know um, the, the woman having been born outside of matrimony would be considered infra dignitate in those days. So Vita Sackville West, she was um, a, a quarter Spanish, and people said that she had some uh, gypsy blood thereby. But certainly she had a bohemian attitude to life, and was certainly not a conformist, despite her rather conventional. Patrician upbringing and one was one of jeunesse doré in the Edwardian period and in some ways she seemed to spend the rest of her life in mourning for la belle époque as it was um, so um, she went to school um, there was no thought of, of, of third level education for her even though she is very academically able um, she devoured books and, and she produced many herself she wrote about a dozen novels several vol volumes of poesy and so forth um, and much of it inspired by the uh, splendid countryside around her. Um, so uh, she was approached by numerous very eligible bachelors, including a man who be later became the Duke of Rutland. Um, but uh, she also had some intimate liaisons with women. Um, so I've heard people say that lesbianism was never outlawed, and I've heard others say, no, 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 it was, but only in the 1920s, because there's so many war widows after the First World War that they wanted to, to prevent... Um, 
these uh, what, what's the word um, sapphic encounters. But having said that, I don't know if any prosecutions ever took place for same-sex relations between women. Um, nevertheless, so she married um, uh, uh, Harold Nicholson rather against the wishes of her p parents who thought he was impecunious because he only made two hundred fifty pounds a year. Was a young diplomat, so um, she. Uh, and then went out with him to Constantinople, which was the capital of the then uh, Ottoman Empire. But uh, she found the city intriguing, though she um, disliked um, the rather staid life of a diplomat's wife, having to dress up and uh, to look at him adoringly at diplomatic receptions. Um, anyway, so uh, she was soon with child and the return to the United Kingdom, where she gave birth just before the First World War, like months before. So she had two sons, not twins, one after the other. Um, and uh, Nigel Nicholson is, is the better known of the two. Um, but soon she was into same-sex relationships and uh, she had a relationship, relationship with um, um, uh, Virginia Woolf for many years, various other women, various other women, sorry, Trefusis, uh, Violet Trefusis, yes, who was married to someone else. And then um, she and Violet swore fidelity to each other. They would not have Congress with their husbands, only with each other. Um, but uh, she appears to be really bisexual, um, uh, Vita Sackville West, and that concept was scarcely understood. So she read the works of Havelock Ellis, Professor Freud, um, and indeed um, Hirschfeld, uh, that uh, German chap who was um, one of the first to say, no, 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 homosexuality is, is entirely acceptable and nothing to be ashamed of. So she did appear to struggle with self-loathing. Uh, to begin with because she was you know taught to believe it was the most appalling and unnatural vice um and the first world war somewhat passed her by didn't appear to be especially patriotic or unpatriotic or pacifist or directly engaged in politics that much even though her husband was um joined the labor party later became an mp briefly been a new party with with, Os with, with oswald mosley the new party which then morphed into the british union of fascists so um Anyway, so they, they then spent their time here at Sissinghurst, which, um, where she'd grown up. Um, and because her, her country home, though, Noel, was quite close to here. She hadn't grown up quite in this house. Uh, was inherited by her um, distant cousin. She's very miffed by that. And then um, this house here is the one that's still owned by the family. They actually live in it. It's Adam Nicholson now. Her grandson lives there with his wife. And there was a documentary they made some years ago, him and his wife, about their attempt to live here and all their clashes they had with the National Trust who were saying you can't do this and you must do that. Um, anyway, so this um, tower here, and that's where she did the bulk of her writing. How about that? Right, a classic 16th century tower, a little bit like Lufton's Tower at Eton, for example. You can see, you can see what the brickwork is like. Anyway, and oh my goodness, I, I'm getting this heady aroma. So. Um, it's, it's like such a fragrant flower filled spot and then you uh, get um, a different odor in each in each room as it is and there are these box hedges and so forth and the whole place is coming to life and blossoming right now and this absolutely cerulean sky without a speck of cloud in it so um, uh, anyway her husband wrote a very detailed diary of it um, Harold Nicholson he'd also been born in an upper-class family was highly educated and, and was a diplomat. They were in Persia in the 1920s briefly. They knew um, Muhammad Reza, who was the Shah. They helped to plan his coronation. Um, but anyway, then they came back to the United Kingdom. They spent the rest of their life here. Though they did travel, they visited Italy and Spain a lot. They uh, spoke a number of other languages. They knew everyone who was anyone. Edwin Lutyens, the celebrated architect, was a friend of theirs, it regularly visited and helped advise them on the garden. So this was their major project through the 1920s and through the 30s. And look at this old bit of a moat. And then there's this gazebo, which is over it. So I'm not sure what you call that. That's algae, that plant which is growing, floating on this stagnant water. And you can have a good walk around um, their grounds. So what a, a splendid spot it is. So it's named Sissinghurst Castle because of the nearby um, the nearby uh, village of Sissinghurst. Anyway, so she she died in um, 1962, um, uh, fairly suddenly. And her husband, who recorded everything in his diaries, uh, she was cremated and her ashes were interred in a church nearby. So um, she wrote a portrait of a marriage about, well, 
her marriage, but also about her numerous affairs. Her husband's also bisexual about his um, uh, encounters with um, men, and they, they both completely accepted this. There was no dishonesty in that. And you can see there's the most splendid vista over the wheel, over these undulating hills, and on towards London. We're not very far from the, from the English Channel. And then, as it says here, the pavilion was built in 1969 in memory of, uh, led by his son, the mayor of Harold Nicholson, author, di diplomatist, and member of Harvard's sister in Hurst. Oh, sorry, sister in Hurst was home from 1930 until his death in 1968. Um, so, yeah, he survived his wife by, by six years. And then I read um, Long Life by Nigel Nicholson, who's their son, and indeed their, 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 their grandson, Adam Nicholson, the one who lives in the grounds. He is a very well known journalist so what a splendid and tranquil spot to grow up and i like the way they have left it a little bit unkempt wild i don't, I don't like it too manicured it's good if there's maybe some variety some places which are kept pristine and immaculate and other places which um, just grow however nature should so choose and anyway i can hear the birds twittering around me so that's um, maybe enough about uh, these two about um uh, Harold Nicholson and his good wife, Vita Sackville West. They're part of the Bloomsbury set. It says that they did used to visit London regularly. The Bloomsbury set, that um, amorphous circle of um, intellectuals, writers, and uh, politicians of the, the early 20th century, roughly 1900 to 1950. There was no membership role as such, um, and they were firmly located on the left. They were social democrats, communists, anarchists, and advanced liberals of various sorts, with progressive views on just about every issue. Um, uh, men and women who were believed in heterosociality. Previously, men and women didn't socialize very much unless it was like a dinner party, but in an in informal setting, they could socialize, so, so they believed. By about 1950, the group had mostly died or just moved on, were, were too diffuse. So they were part of that set of some of the most um, fascinating writers, thinkers, and artists of the early 20th century here in the United Kingdom. We're going into another room, as it were, so perhaps you get a feel for the place, um, the, the variety offers, um, the placidity, the simplicity, and the beauty. Anyway, and I can hear some birds clucking away, so you can take a big, you can take a big walk through the grounds, and if it were not for coronavirus, you want to be allowed to go into some of the buildings, see where they died, and hear her husband, um, uh, Harold Nicholson, he used to write in one of the other rooms near the gatehouse. So that's enough from me, so please donate on my channel. I urgently need donations to sustain the channel. You can find me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Callahan is spelled C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. Right, thank you very much everyone. Toodaloo.